Dale, I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your financial market wrap up for this wild Wednesday. This is the 18th of March, 2020, and we're about 4.38 p.m. Central Time. It's actually daylight savings time here. So before I get into the markets, we have to have a plan for each other. It's very possible I won't be able to get into the studio to do these type of I'll call them the weatherman ads. I'd probably have to do something else from uh, my other remote computers and put it up. I will do my best. But in this crazy time, and it is a crazy time, expect bumps in the road. They're going to close the New York Stock Exchange floor. Not trading. I want to be so clear with what I'm telling you. The trading floor starting on March 23rd. We've already closed, as you know, the CME group floor. So what does it impact? Honestly, Bigger type deals, special trade arrangements in terms of option trades or trade strategies, but for the average person buying and selling in the citadels and all that, nah, it's not going to have all the impact. You'll have plenty of liquidity in the markets. Everything's electronic today. If you've ever been to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and I had offices over there, and I, I know I've been on the floor many, many times, uh, it, it's run its course sort of like the Chicago Merck floor. but. The needs there, they're able to do things on the floor, and it's much smaller than you would think in person, but they get things done that you need human contact with. So for a short while, okay, it'll all come back. This is not over. As our wartime president, Trump, and that's what he's calling himself, we too will get over this, and that will happen there. Okay, the action, all you can say is it's blowout time. And that's how you define something like this. Blowout time. When you get a blowout, people just start bailing on everything. I was looking at my spider ETF video that I just put up on the website. Every spider and ETF I track was down today. So all at one time, people are throwing in the towel. No, it does not mean this was the low either. Remember this cycle. We still have more cases to come, more coronavirus. There's going to be more talk. The news is going to be worse. So just when you think you're okay, you're not so okay. London is going into shutdown now. The schools are closing there. Italy's saying they might need beyond April 3rd to keep a lockdown. It's not yet better. That simple. When we take a look at the weekly area chart of closes, you can see the monster decline. All you can say is the market has gone into a meltdown as people are just bailing on everything. And as you can see, new lows for the whole move today. Now, a lot of traders have been looking at this 2300 area and hoping that that would be the zone that the market finds support. 2250, I've heard all these numbers. Okay, it might be. When we take a look at how the decline's going, yeah. I predict that we will look back at this event the way we did in the 87 crash, in the dot-com bubbles, in the 2007 and 8, and you will say a while down the road here, that was the buying opportunity, one of the best I've ever seen for certain, blah, 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 whatever it turns out to be. The world is not ending. We are in a dramatic event of this virus, something we haven't seen in modern times. When we take a look at moving averages, you had a crossover, the market's down. I would view these last rally highs, the one you had yesterday on the swing line. Take out this 2554 zone. It's the first sign, if that occurs, that something's changing in the market. No, I'm not predicting a bottom. But you would have broken this pattern that's been in place literally this whole decline of lower highs, lower lows. So as a chartist, I'm always looking for an event that might be a telltale event. That's all I'm saying. In the Bollinger Bands, even with meltdowns, indicators still go to work. They don't care that there's a meltdown. They're a mathematical formula. And when you get under these bands, I'm telling you, 95% of the time the market doesn't stay under them. So on the, on the rallies, the pros are probably selling and they're covering against those bands. If you look at momentum, well, I'm paying strong attention. Both numbers are under 20. Both numbers under 20 uh, yesterday. Both numbers under 20 the day before, not the day before. So you embedded. If you lose the embedded slow stochastic and you clear this 2554 level, could that be the final point where the market is saying, we reached one washout phase, maybe that phase is over? It doesn't mean that you're through on the downside, but maybe you 
finished this particular level of the panic. Of course, we have Sunday night to deal with again. Do we get bad news? What does Monday do? But you've got to start keeping your eye on this. When you look at the NASDAQ, you're about to get a bearish crossover where the 18-day average is going to get under the 200-day. The dark lines, the 200, the 100s up here. It's not often a bullish sign. It's a bearish sign. Did we embed here? Both numbers are under 20. Both were under 20 yesterday. And the day before, both are under 20. So you have your embedded reading. And I'm, I see on this chart the same I do on the S&P. You keep challenging Bollinger Bands. You move to the right-hand side. You're working lower. We haven't had a situation where from back here, the same time frame, we've had the lower highs, lower lows. Take this rally out here. And then I start looking at the market saying, huh, take out 75.52, all of a sudden the market stepped out of that. And to get there, you might even lose the embedded reading. Be another sign to me that the market might have finished this leg of the washout. In the Dow, it's different. You've just got the straight down move. And yes, if you look at today's close at 19, at 19,981, you did get over the Bollinger Band at the end of it, okay. But you don't have that lower high, lower low. It's all the way back here. So is embedded reading and so on? This looks to me weaker than the other markets for the reasons that I just gave you. The Russell joins the parade with the others. It's got the embedded reading. It's got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. It too, they all are looking at the Bollinger Bands and they step to the right hand side. That's all that you can say about it. Do you pick value here? No. Best thing you could do, put your hands in your pocket and watch and learn. In the VIX. The market's got higher lows, higher highs, embedded reading. It's the flip-flop here in a way. Lose this embedded reading turned down and it gives you an idea that maybe that other pressure on the stock market's ready to come up a little, bounce in other words. This has maybe gone too high. I think we're going to look back and say 84 is a big number, you know, but what can I tell you? Until this is over, it's not over. In the bonds. We lost the embedded reading back here and we got yesterday to that 18-day average. We're just swinging all over the place. Trying to control risk with a five and a half point move a day. If you know anything, if you've been trading, this is monstrous. This is not normal. This is not risk control. There is no risk control in this. This is just watch them and weep. That, that's what I like to call it. Ten-year note, you're actually in a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows. If you look at the settlement price, you're under the 18-day average. Could you go to the lower band? Sure. Are you oversold already? Yes. <laughs> already, you're at a 29 reading. Nah, I, I do say this market peaked out up here. Could the market go for those numbers again? Yeah, you know, I don't know what COVID-19 is going to do to us. I don't know the science fiction movie that we're actually living out, but I also know as I said before, be it polio, chicken pops, mumps, all these things have come and gone. This too will run its course and the world, not the United States, the world is throwing everything they've got in science and money to get this under control. That's what you're looking at. The heck with worrying about what deficits are. The name of the game is save the economies, then we'll worry about what we do to right the economies. That is the way to look at it dollar index. This is just a panic move. A total panic move in this dollar index. Up another today, 1.74%. And the damage it's doing is unbelievable because think of all the loans that have to be repaid and these, these currencies have to be converted to dollars. Maybe a moratorium. Don't know. But when you go from Bollinger Band bottom to Bollinger Band top, coming from an area like that, nah, I keep my hands in my pocket. Same in the euro. You're down to an area where you should be finding support. The lower Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Band theory doesn't go away in market panics. So keep your eye on this. That 108.40 level, very important. You got to 108.50 today. You're in that ballpark. You're oversold. You need no reason for this market to give you a reversal for any reason. The Japanese yen is paying great attention, for the moment at least, to the 100-day average of closes. So as much as it stepped down here, it's finding between the 18-day average and the 100, ah, it's having trouble getting through it. If it lets go, 
well then wherever this Bollinger Band bottom is comes into play. However, to sell it, just think about this, you're already selling an oversold condition. Bitcoin holding the lower Bollinger Band lost its bearish embedded reading. Now, did it lose it yesterday? No, it did it on the close today. You got a reading over 20. Unless it gains it right back, this market's signaling that price and the 18 day average are likely, they don't have to, but they're likely to saying, be saying they want to come together again. What do you say with something like this? You yesterday on the difference, saw a $1.40 difference between Brent and WTI. That difference moved out today $2.50. Is something going on between the Saudis and Russia is the only thing I can think of. I don't have, uh, I don't have a private line to know, but when Brent jumps that much over it in one day, something is going on in the marketplace. You see in the Brent, it stayed down. The chart by itself is bearish but you were down even more in the WTI. So it's not as though Brent picked up and ran and something happened, but the differential went bonkers today. And you're still in a bear market in the WTI. Would you think you'd be knocking on the door of 2050? Think about that. Think of the pressure this is putting on everything at this point. Gasoline prices, nobody's driving, otherwise we'd all be cheering this, but you're at 63 and a half cents bear market, embedded reading. Be careful, just like in the stock indices. If you see all of a sudden these highs taken out, especially this one, of course, that breaks this pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Could be the telltale sign that the market has now found the value area and maybe a move gets over. We've gone from the Bollinger Band high to the low in four days. It didn't matter that all the oil production that we're talking about coming off right now Everything's in a sell mode. And when everything's in a sell mode, I want you to go to my website and I want you to look at my morning videos because 5.30, 5.40 in the morning, I'm already recording. I'm covering 40 futures charts, most of the time with specific buy, sell, do this, do that. Right now, I, I think that I've earned for my subscribers, my fee, by telling them to keep their hands in their pocket because all you could do is get run over in this market. Even if you get short, the rallies within the market are so extreme that you get knocked out because at the end of the day, you have to risk money and you have to have money controls to last in the game. Those that don't have them suddenly wake up and they're out monstrous amounts of money and yet they're right the market on an overall basis. Money is just as important as a technical indicator. And this is how the charts look. They'll be with a black background. I'm, at that hour, you won't see me, but I'm talking, got my headset on, I'm covering all this markets in this sequence, and you get a scroll bar on the bottom so you can pull along with it. How do you get this? It's simple. Go to our website under the word research. At the top, you'll see it. Gives you all the info, you sign up right there, $7.95. You're home anyways. Why not enjoy for eight bucks, 30 days, and see what the market's about from my perspective. I'm I Repstein, you have a good day. Remember, if I'm not here, we'll try to do something with the videos, but uh, I just have no control over how things are going. Take care.